What we know is that if you have obesity or overweight, and that's like your only medical condition, we know that can put you at an increased risk of heart disease. So it puts you at an increased risk of having things like a heart attack, a stroke, or potentially dying because of a heart attack or stroke. So it should seem simple enough that if excess weight equals increased risk of heart disease, then decreasing that excess weight should equal a decrease in risk of heart disease. Now, I did technically fail first year calculus, so math is definitely not my strong suit, but that seems to add up to me. However, when we look at the data around treating obesity with either medications or lifestyle, well, the data really is not that thrilling. In fact, a few medications, in particular Meridia and Belvique, were actually shown to be quite harmful to the heart and have since been removed from the market. So we don't got the greatest track record with medications, or at least past obesity medications, and when we look at the lifestyle perspective, an individual has to lose greater than 10% of their baseline weight with lifestyle changes before we start seeing some benefits on the cardiovascular risk reduction side of things. And unfortunately, with lifestyle alone, losing greater than 10%, even greater than 5% of your baseline weight is a really hard effing thing to do. But the GLP-1 medications like Ozempic and Wagovi are new and improved and they don't have the similar risks that those old medications do. And in fact, people that are much smarter than me have done a whole pile of lab experiments and have actually found that the GLP-based 1 medications seem to have some effects on the cardiovascular system that are actually quite beneficial. And this is outside of just their effects in helping us to manage our blood sugars and manage our weight. So what the GLP-1 medications seem to do is they help to reduce inflammation in the body, they help to stabilize those annoying little plaques that are all within our arteries that if they burst open, well, that's when we get a heart attack or a stroke. And so they do different things like that and seem to provide a benefit that is outside of the normal blood sugar and weight management aspect. And in fact, we actually have some very well done human trials that looked at drugs like Ozempic and showed that they could reduce the risk of things like heart attacks, strokes, and death due to those things. But that data was all in individuals that had diabetes. So the question becomes, well, if I don't have diabetes, but I still have obesity, am I still going to get a benefit from these medications from that cardiovascular heart disease perspective? Well, the good news is, is that Linkoff and friends decided to do the SELECT trial, which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine back in December, which tried to answer that exact question. Can this drug, Wagovi, aka Ozempic, aka semaglutide, at a dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week, can it provide a benefit from heart disease for individuals that don't have diabetes, but they have obesity? Now, if you're getting some value out of my content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, and please like and share my video, spread the word, get all of your friends on board so that they can come and get all this wonderful information, and of course, you can all help me feel real great about my self-esteem as I see my subscriber numbers go up. Also, don't forget to sign up for my YouTube membership page. The OG members that sign up, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get an exclusive live at the end of every single month with myself, where you can have that access to me and ask your questions about your weight management journey, and I'll be answering them live the last Wednesday of every single month. Plus, your support also helps me because I do all of this video content creation in my spare time. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that already has and is signing up. So what did Linkoff and friends actually do in the select trial? Well, they took a large group of people, 17,600 individuals in fact, and they split them into two groups. One group got Wagovi that was increased to a dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week, and the other group got a placebo. They then followed these individuals while they were taking Wagovi or a placebo for a period of 40 months, or 3.3 years, for those of you that don't like the extra math homework. 
And at the end of that period of time, the authors then added up how many people in each group had things like a heart attack, a stroke, or had died because of a heart attack or stroke. They then compared the results of the two groups to find out if Wagovi did indeed have a benefit or not. Now, an important note that I want to share with you here is that the authors of this trial did not provide any kind of dietary advice or physical activity advice. Basically, people were just given either the drug or a placebo and sent on their way and left to their own means as to how they would go about either losing weight or whatever. The purpose of this was to allow for us to really know what effect just the drug itself, not the drug with other lifestyle changes, had on an individual's risk of heart disease. Now, before I dive into the results here, I want to tell you about the people that partook in this study. The reason this is important is because it allows us to know how applicable the data from this trial is to you as an individual. So if you are similar to the individuals that partook in this study, well, then the results of this trial might have more of a benefit or more applicability to you. So to give you the breakdown, the average age was about 62 years old. A majority were male with about one quarter being female. The average BMI was approximately 33. Nobody had diabetes, but two thirds of individuals did have pre-diabetes being defined as an A1C greater than 5.7%. As well, the people in this trial already had heart disease. So they had already had a prior heart attack, a prior stroke, or they had peripheral arterial disease. So does this sound like you? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Either way, keep on listening. It's time for the results. And the main result that the authors were looking at was a combination or basically they added up how many people had a heart attack, how many people had a stroke, and how many people died from a heart attack or a stroke. They added all these people up and what we call this is a composite outcome because it's adding a whole bunch of things together to see basically do we get a result in this compiling of people. And as you can see here in this graph, we have in the yellow here is the Wagovi that's going up, and in the gray, we have what was happening in the placebo group. Obviously, the Wagovi group is below that gray line, the placebo group. And I'm just gonna hop onto my little soapbox here and say that I'm not a huge fan of composite outcomes because it's kind of like hedging your bets to try and guarantee a result or at least increase your chances of seeing some kind of positive result by adding together a whole bunch of small things that might not actually be all that positive to try and ultimately get to the result and publishable data that you want. Some people may disagree with me and that's fine. That's just my little soapbox and little interjection there for you. So I'll report the results of the primary composite outcome, but then we'll look at all the individual factors that actually were used in creating that outcome to determine what kind of results actually matter. Anywho, so based on our graph here, about 569 people in the Wagovi group experienced some kind of cardiovascular event and there was 701 people in the placebo group that experienced some event. So clearly the Wagovi group had fewer events compared to the placebo group. And in fact, when we actually calculate out the data, the absolute risk reduction came out to be about 1.5% and the number needed to treat came out to be 67. Now, what I mean by absolute risk reduction, let's say your risk of having an event is about 15%, when we say an absolute risk reduction of 1.5%, well, that means you go from 15% to 13.5% risk of having some kind of cardiovascular event over that 40 month or 3.3 year period if you're taking this drug. Or to say it in a little bit of a more comprehensible way, the number needed to treat, what that means is if we took 67 individuals from this study, we would need to treat all 67 of them with Wagovi at a dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week for 3.3 years for one single person to have a reduced risk of having an event. 
Now, those results might not seem all that exciting, and I'll kind of elaborate a little bit more as we go along here. First, let's look at the individual factors that were concluded in this composite outcome to see what kind of results each of those factors actually came out to be. So the main benefit that Wagovi seemed to provide was reducing the risk of heart attacks. What we saw is that there was 234 individuals that were taking Wagovi that ended up having a heart attack compared to about 322 individuals in the placebo group that had a heart attack. The difference between those two groups was indeed significant, so it was a result that we can say with 95% confidence that Wagovi did create and did in fact reduce an individual's risk of heart attack. And what that ultimately came out to be was a number needed to treat of 100. So if we were to take 100 individuals from this study, we would need to give all 100 of them Wagovi at a dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week for one individual to not have a heart attack. In terms of reducing an individual's risk of strokes or deaths because of cardiovascular diseases such as heart attacks or strokes, well, the results were less appealing and less thrilling. In fact, they were non-significant, so in that situation, we really can say that Wagovi was no better in preventing those things compared to the placebo. They also counted up the individuals that had a death or died because of any cause, not just because of heart disease, it could have been any other kind of reason, and they actually found a significant or positive result in that Wagovi, compared to placebo, reduce the risk of death from any cause. If you want more information about GLP-1 medications, go to the link down in my description as well as in the first comment there. Click the link, enter your email, and you can download my little handout and PDF on GP GLP-1 medications to use with friends, families, or talking to your primary care provider. So that was the main kind of primary cardiovascular death defying results and that sort of thing. As for the other results around how much weight was lost and that sort of thing, the individuals that were taking Wagovi on average lost about 9.4% of their weight from baseline. Remember, these people weren't given any counseling on dietary patterns or activity levels. The placebo group only lost about 1%, I think it was a little bit less than 1% of their weight from baseline, so substantially less weight was taken off for those people. As for the adverse events side of things, so side effects that occurred, well, we got the typical gastrointestinal or stomach issues, so nausea, heartburn, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, all what we expect with these medications, but they went away as the study went on. There was an increased risk of having some gallbladder issues, which again, I've covered in previous videos, really isn't due to the medication itself. It's largely due to losing weight quite rapidly and getting a collection of cholesterol within the gallbladder. That collection creates stones, that then irritates the gallbladder and can lead to gallbladder issues. When they looked at things like pancreatitis, kidney disease, psychiatric disorders, and other GI blocking type diseases and stuff like that, the rate that was occurring with Wagovi was the same rate as what was happening in the placebo group. So it looks like Wagovi was not causing an increase in any of those other side effects that we sometimes hear about, at least when we compare it to the placebo in this study. Cool, 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 cool. So what exactly do all of these results mean? How can we actually apply them to you if maybe you're like the people in this study and also maybe if you're not like the people in this study? You're probably saying, well, those results didn't seem all that great. You have to treat like 100 people that are similar to me for one of us to get a benefit and I only get a like 1% reduction in my risk of heart disease. So who cares? Unfortunately, if you're someone who hasn't had heart disease up to this point in time, we would need to treat even more people, a larger group, in order for just one person to ultimately get the benefit of the drug in reducing their risk of some kind of heart disease or cardiovascular event. In a perfect world, the number needed to treat would come out to be one, and that would mean, yeah, Everybody essentially got a benefit and everybody's winning, but that is not the case when it comes to studies and trials and drugs like these. So on the individual level, these kind of results don't really seem like that big of a deal. It kind of puts into question whether it's, you know, you're actually going to get a benefit or not. We're really kind of looking at risks and rates and all this other kind of stuff. 
But when we zoom out and we look at the larger population of people, and if we look at the millions upon billions of people that live on our planet and that are struggling with obesity or struggling with obesity and diabetes, and we then provide them with this medication, well then that starts to change the picture. Well, we start to reduce the risk of having an event in large numbers of people, which on a societal community level leads to a lot of really, really great benefits. It leads to a reduction in healthcare costs, and ultimately we get a more positive, healthier population. So hopefully that provides you a bit of perspective and hopefully that gives you a little bit of a rundown on the select trial and what they tried to answer the question of whether Wagovi can provide a cardiovascular benefit in individuals that don't have diabetes, but they do have a history of heart disease. So on an individual level, it might not seem like the results are super great, but on a population level, that's where we really start to get the bang for our buck. So definitely it still would be worth it for you to go on the medication and if you were doing things like changing your dietary patterns and exercising more and doing all the other great things for your health, you're probably going to get even more benefit than just what the drug all on its own is going to provide for you. And the really cool thing is, is that the results of this study were really happening outside of just the weight loss component of things because individuals weren't even losing greater than 10% of their baseline weight. So that does indicate that if they only lost 9.4% of their baseline weight, the drug was likely having some benefit outside of the weight loss alone in helping to protect the heart and reduce an individual's risk of an event. It's not the most mind-blowing result and it's not like it's going to shatter the world in any kind of way, but it nonetheless is a check mark on the benefit that these medications can have and gives us more credence in terms of insurance companies for sure, but also the individual that we have sitting in front of us and which medication is going to be the best option for them. I don't know about you, but but this ending kind of seems a bit anticlimactic, to be honest. Uh, I thought it was going to be, yeah, a little bit more thrilling than, than what it actually was. But it is what it is. That is the data. That is the study. I hope you got some, some value out of this nonetheless. Of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And of course, I will be back next week with another video. And again, don't forget to check out my YouTube membership where the exclusive perk is. I do a live at the end of every single month for the exclusive OG members. So go and sign up for that today. As well, check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. We're on the tick, the talk, the gram, and check out the links down below where you can check out my Amazon store for my recommendations on how to manage side effects with these medications. As well, you can check out my links to get my GLP-1 PDF handout to talk with friends, family, and your clinicians about. And of course, my final sign off is that always remember small tweaks lead to those massive peaks.